Hi guys, this is Rice Snow. Last time we created the event handler class, so now we can trigger event when player character hits a certain tile. However, after uploading the video, I received this comment from Terminal Unique 95. So the player character keep receiving damage if you keep pushing him in the same direction. And yes, I was aware of this and uh, I thought it's somehow acceptable since you can avoid getting further damage if you change your direction. And I knew handling this would require a little reconstruction of the code, so I was kind of being lazy and took an easy way. But I have to agree, it would be definitely better if the system is more flexible and give us more options. So thank you for pointing this out and uh, giving me a push to work on it. We still reuse the majority of the code that we have written in the last video and I think you will like the result. Anyway, let's start. Okay, so last time we used this rectangle class to create the event rect. But this time we create a new class for this. So inside of this main package, create a class. I'm gonna name this event rect. And this class extends rectangle. So this is basically an extended version of rectangle. It still has all the functions of rectangle, but we can add more. And first we create the default x and y variables here. And rect default x and event rect default y. Right. Then we create a boolean event dom equal false. So with this boolean, we can check if this event has already happened or never happened yet. So this gives us an option to create an one-time only event. Then go to this event handler class and remove this rectangle event rect and also this integers. And instead, we use this event rect and rect as a two dimensional array. And now inside of this constructor, we instantiate this rect equal new event rect and the size is gp dot max old call and gp dot max old low. So now we have an event rectangle on every single tile on the map, basically. And then we're gonna set the this solid area to this array. Int call equal zero int low equal zero and y call less than max world call and low is less than b dot max world low and we're gonna copy this or cut and paste here and change this to event rect call and allow. So add this, 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 and also add this, this, call, allow, call, allow. And okay, this is not a rectangle, but event rect. Okay, so now all these event rect has these uh, 
kind of a solid area. And now update this hit method. So here as well, we're gonna add this call and the low. Hmm? Ah, okay, so event call. So let's change this call and the low because it's shorter. So yeah, we're gonna add this call and the low to this one and this one and this one and this is call and low. And this is also event rect call and low. And this is also and okay. Yep. Okay, this is it, I think. So all the error is gone now. Okay, let's check. What? Oh no. Of course. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I forgot to uh, add call here. So this loop doesn't end. So uh, yeah, let's add this. If call equal dot max all call, then uh, call equal zero and uh, low plus plus. So this should end, end the loop. Let's check. Okay. And okay, so bit, yeah. Mm. Okay, so it is working just like before. And now let's utilize the uh, flexibility that we acquired by creating this event rect array. So for example, maybe you want to make this, you know, damage pit event one time only. So once you fell into the pit and receive damage, then uh, you can work on the tile after that. So I will show you how to implement such event. Okay, first we add parameters to these event methods. So int call and int log. And also, yeah, here too. So 27, we pass the call and the loud data to this event method too. So this way we can access to a specific event. And uh, after handling this event, we can call that uh, event dump boolean event Select call and allow that event done call true. Then inside of this hit method, we add one more condition here. Uh, event select call and allow that event done equal uh, false. So this way the event only happens when the event down boolean is false. So let's check. Alright, let's fall into the pit. Okay, fall into a pit. And now, yeah, so the event won't happen again. So this damage pit event is one time only now. Yeah, so this is one way to utilize this event rect class. Okay, then another case. So this time the damage pit is not one time only. Whenever you step on the tile, you receive damage. Yeah, so let's disable this for now. But we don't want it to happen repeatedly like before, like this. Okay, first we create variables. Integer previous event x and previous event y. And also boolean 
can touch event equal to what we're gonna do is we set some kind of margin and make it so if an event happened it won't happen again until player character move away from the event rectangle by one tile distance so this way we can prevent the event from happening repeatedly so after player character hit an event we record his world x and world y so previous event x equal gp dot player dot world x yes event y equal gp dot player dot world y <laughs> and based on this information we check the distance between player character and the last event check if the player character is more than one tile away from the last event okay uh let me type first int x distance mass.abs gp dot player dot world x minus previous event x and y distance equal mass dot abs gp dot player dot world y minus previous event y then uh, distance equal mass dot max x distance and y distance and if distance is larger than gp dot tile size then can touch event equal true. So in case you are not familiar with these math methods, this math ABS returns absolute values of this, this calculation. So which means even if the number is negative, it still gets it as a positive number. So this is useful when you want to know the pure distance between objects. Then we use this mass.max. So this simply picks a greater number of two integers. So either it's horizontal or vertical, we take a greater one. And if this distance is greater than the tile size, then it means player character is more than one tile away from the last event so we can trigger the event again and we add if statement here if can touch event equal true then we can check this event and also after this damage pit event, we add this line uh, can touch event equal false. And to test this, I'm gonna add one more damage pit at uh, somewhere around here. Go 13 and uh, low. 19 and this time I'm gonna set any to this required direction Yeah, so direction doesn't matter Okay, let's check Okay hmm. You fall into a pit But now it doesn't happen repeatedly like before and this one as well 
or going to pit. Yeah, but you can still move, move away like this. Where is it? Where's the pit? Here. Yeah, so now once the event happens, it won't happen again until player character takes one tile distance from it. For this healing event, we don't need to move away to trigger it again since we, uh, we didn't add this line to this healing pool method. But you can choose how you handle it. Yeah, that's it. So the event system is more flexible and customizable now. And we can add more element to this event select class whenever we get a new idea. I should have done this in the first place, so I apologize for making the process a bit redundant. But I hope you like this new system. And in the next video, I will answer another comment and uh, address a couple of bugs regarding NPC interaction. And then we move on to the next stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time.